Well, hello there folks, my name is Hypocrisite and I am back. You have been waited for way too long for any new videos and so have I. I couldn't do anything for the past 3 or 4 months because simply I didn't have the PC and the time, of course. But now I am back after some perturbations. Um, I am in my new apartment and also I have launched my new, oh maybe not new, well it is new, technically, <laughs> Patreon page. Um, it's kind of bare bones right now because um, uh, I've just uploaded, uh, sorry, I've just uh, launched it today. Uh, there are, of course, uh, tiers, uh, there are also my insights on uh, or into uh, my mind, my uh, thinking uh, behind uh, this uh, Patreon page. So I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, if you want to check it, then check it. I would really appreciate uh, if you support me. But if you well, don't have any spare change or something like that, just a simple subscribe, like and a comment down below uh, would be much appreciated. So, into the game we go. Um, this is actually a second time when I uh, record uh, this first video, uh, from, of course from, from the New Order mod. Uh, because uh, mm, I wanted to make a, uh, a series on Aryan Brotherhood, but I think, well, uh, I had to uh, re-record uh, this first episode because when I recorded it, uh, the new update, like this F hotfix or whatever, uh, was uploaded by the dev team and uh, my saves went into trash. So uh, I would have to re-record this and I thought that maybe uh, the Aryans are not the best uh, nation to play, uh, mainly because, well, you have to be on um, high spirits to play and not to get depressed. <laughs> Basically the same goes for any wacky uh, leader such as, you know, Tabolitsky or whatever. So I thought that maybe we will go uh, with a new um, leader, uh, a leader that was introduced in the, well, in the previous update but now it has uh, it has some content and this leader is um, where is he of course w I'm not uh, uh, talking about Matkowski but I am talking about Verbel or Werbel or wh however his name is uh, pronounced I think it's Werbel Mitchell Werbel um, he's in Magadan I think not in Chitta, not in Amur, he's in Magadan. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's get uh, right into it. It's Magadan. And start. Alright, so here we are. Um, this is the lore behind Magadan, but I don't think it is um, important. Oh yeah, maybe let's maybe let's read it. This mod is all about reading, after all. Once Mikhail Matkovsky was an enthusiastic member of the Russian fascist party within the exiled community of Harbin. Or Harbin? Harbin? Few still held any reverence for the old guards of the white movement, the old men that had lost Russia to the hands of the Reds. Fascism, a modern ideology, a rejection of decadent liberalism and unnatural socialism seemed to Matkovsky the way forward. 
Russia would be made strong. Once the Soviet Union inevitably cr crumbled, uh, the true heirs of Harbin would come forth from Japanese Manchuria and begin the Great Crusade to liberate Russia. Konstantin Rodzajewski brought doubt to Matkowski's mind. The so-called Vojd of the Russian Fascist Party was an Amaro brute. His associates jumped up thugs, men of no caliber, the refuse of the Russian community in Harbin. When Germany invaded Russia, brutalizing its people, the RFP's leader wrote psychopathic psychothantic letters of praise to the men who despoiled Russia. No, Rozaevsky could not be trusted to save Russia. And so Matkovsky began to plot. With the help of Nikolai, P uh, Nikolai Pietlin, a man known in Harbin for its ties to uh, the Russo-American community, Matkovsky waited. The opportunity of a lifetime came in the late 50s. Yagoda's pathetic Soviet remnants launched a futile war to conquer the Central Siberian Republic. The strain of fighting broke down both nations, letting the white community in Harbin free to strike. The invasion broke, ba broke the back of Yagoda's state, liber liberating Chita, Amur and Magadan. In this moment of triumph for the RFP, Matkovsky enacted his plan. The port city of Magadan was seized, along with a great deal of the RFP's invasion force. Rodzajewski's thugs were pushed back to Amur, deprived of the critical port of Magadan. In Magadan, the true leader of the Russian Fascist Party awaits. There is much work to be done. The remaining, uh, remaining Rodzajewski loyalists must be purged. Foreign contacts must be reached and critical supplies of weapons and mercenaries must be brought in. Matkovsky's path uh, ahead remains long and hard, nevertheless he presses on. Only he has the strength to save Russia from its anarchy. Appeal to America's white emig emigri? emigre? I don't know how, how to pronounce this. Community to garner support and ensure Matkovsky's success. Deal with the mad Vojd in Amur, Amur and decrypt while Junta in Chita to unite the Far East against Bolshevism. Begin the reunification of Russia under the true Vojd. Onwards. Destiny lies ahead. So basically we are not... Uh, uh, well, we are not... Uh, staying with Matkovsky. Let me have a sip of my tea. We are not staying with Matkovsky because I have a different, uh, as I've said uh, earlier, I have a different uh, plan for for Magadan, that is uh, United States of Russia under Mitchell Werbel III. But before we uh, go into it, uh, we have to uh, clear this part of the focus tree. So I think that to get Werbel, we need to go with a mercenary force. I think. So, but well, before we get into it, get to it, we need to go through uh, the uh, beginning focus tree. So the true heir of Harbin. The Russian fascist party, as it was known in Harbin, is now uh, is now gone. Along displeased with Rodzajewski's policies and rhetoric, Matkovsky and his swing of the party has taken control of Magadan and are now molding it to suit their purposes. No longer shall the party struggle in the mud, while the whole of Russia suffers. No more thuggery, no more rhetorics of hatred. Mother Russia calls us to her fold, to rescue her from ruin. Before Matkovsky can do his duty for his motherland, however, he must rule alone, without constraint and free of disloyalty. While he trusts his wing of the party, he must crush dissent among the ranks. All those suspected of loyalty to Rodzajewski shall find themselves purged. With his political uh, hold over Magadan secure, Matkovsky shall do his sacred duty, one that he has steeled himself to do ever since the heady days of Harbin. Under his guidance, Russia shall stand again. So strong, unrivaled, and we'll get some political power and base war support. For some research, we will go with uh, night vision. 
Wait. Something has changed. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was actually the support weapons too, and now it's night vision. Mm, yeah, well, I think that we should go with the night vision because it clears us the way for support weapons. And um, maybe engineering, maybe some research speed bonuses because we are my on minus 34% of research speed. So it's not good. Um, we have some free civilian factories. Are you mad? Holy fuck. Some free military factories. Yeah, well, let's go with basic infantry rifle because that's probably... The only thing that I can now produce. And we have some free dockyards, so let's go with some convoys. Unassigned divisions, we have three divisions. And they all should be uh, stationed somewhere around here. Um, okay, so... Um, Damn, that's not good. I don't know if Yakutia or Aldan are able to, um, you know, raid me, but... Oh, this province actually uh, is next to Yakutsk. So for Aldan, yeah. I will just move this one to Aldan here, and we are good to go. The last of the true. Matkovsky steadied his glass against his nose, peering down at a piece of paper with rows and rows of names written all over it. A list of Rozaevsky's suspected loyalists. He looked up to discover a room packed to the brim with books, from his white army days, old decaying American newspapers, and, in the far corner, shrouded in the dark, an old gramophone gathering rust and dust. The sight of the thing brought a smirk to Matkovsky's face. The old carbon building, the dances and the parties, and above all of it, the electric swastika promising another future for the Russians stranded there. The doorbell rang, shaking Matkovsky's, Matkovsky from his reverie. Two gruff men, dressed in the party uniform, entered. In his small and messy room, they stood out as an oddity, almost barbaric even. Their feet thumped loudly on the wooden floors as they attempted clumsy salutes, one lean, with breezes of blonde hair peeking beneath the party cap, the other stucky, with the bulge of his stomach plain to the eye. After a few moments of awkward silence, Matkovsky stared at them before finally saying, Well? With trembling voices, they gave him the names of the people they had purged today. Matkovsky gave them a generous smile. Thank you, you may go. When he heard the door knob latch itself closed, he turned back to his list. Sergei A, Bruno B, Nicolas C. He crossed them out, dubbing the names in thick black ink, snuffing them out forever from the history of the Russian fascist party. Balancing his glass of whiskey in his hands, Matkovsky uh, looked at his reflection against the murky liquid before taking a sip. The hours went by, the doorbell rang and the men came and did their salutes, telling him of the names disappearing from the list. Sometimes, when the wind was right, he could hear the crack of rifle fire somewhere deep in the woods. It was night time by, by the time he finished the list. He gently pushed the men out, thanking them for a job well done. After they left, he bolted the door behind them. Turning to his gramophone, he decided that he would dance to the memories of Harbin. He turned it on and let the good times roll. The Vojd have a, has a lot of work to do. Okay, so the focus is, is completed. And... Uh, is there any um, follow-up event going on? No? Okay. So let's go with building the wastes. News of horror drifts from the west. 
German terror bombings, bandit raids, and wars fought by Russians against Russians. On the edges of far eastern Russia, Magadan is remote and sheltered from the troubles that plague the rest of the motherland. Due to its distance, however, Magadan is not much. Located in this uh, Paris region of Russia, both in population and resources, there is not much here that is of use for the eventual liberation and reunion of Russia. Matkovsky will change that. The officials of his party shall travel the streets and outskirts of Magadan for workers willing to join him in his crusade. They will build roads and telegram poles, small workshops and manufactories. When the day of liberation dawns upon the dark body of Russia, laid to rest by failures of the Reds and the crimes of the Germans, they shall find themselves richly re rewarded by their duty and dedication, for Matkovsky shall let no fate in him go to waste. The industrial equipment uh, development will begin to improve, and Magadan will get two infrastructure and two building slots. That's actually pretty neat, because uh, we are kinda low on infrastructure. And before we go any further, if you will, if you could, if you will hear any, uh, if uh, if you hear any uh, weird noises or some uh, shouting going on, it's probably uh, my cat playing outside or my neighbors uh, having an argument, like for tenth time. Uh, during the day, so uh, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> okay, so building the wastes uh, focus is, com is completed, maybe some follow-up events. No, no follow-up events. Um, yeah, it's it, it doesn't matter what will I ch what I will choose. So, so let's go with Siberian factories. Magadan, as has been noted before, is remote and isolated from the rest of Russia. In the port town of Magadan itself, the industry that exists is small and not particularly tailored to the production of war material. Fortunately, in the Far East, this lack of industry persists everywhere, as the industrial center of Vladivostok, developed in the time of the Reds, is now lost to the Japanese and Manchurians. To put it briefly, all who we fight in the East are on a level playing ground. No opportunity passes Matkovsky by, however. From the wastes of Siberia he shall craft factories with the express intent of waging war, not small-time conflicts between children. The party shall arm and train the soldiers of Magadan as soldiers, not bandits possessing a higher ideal. Additionally, no citizen sheltering under the wings of the party shall know poverty or lack. Let this be an example, a vision of Russia to come. We will get some industrial expertise to improve and a building, a civilian factory. The Wastes of Magadan Mikhail Matkovsky stood, overlooking a large map of Magadan and its hinterland in the conference room that he and his top advisors often met in. He sighed, taking in the reality of his situation. While Magadan was a real town, most of the territory he, that he controlled was either depopulated, underdeveloped or both. It wasn't exactly an ideal situation for a government that needed bodies and industry as fast as possible. As a number of his ministers fi filled in, okay, filled in, or filed, probably filed in, okay, sorry, filed in, all of them presumably having been briefed on uh, the nature of the meeting, Matkovsky turned to them. In his well-known, tactful manner, he addressed his audience. It's clear that our current industrial situation is untenable, continuing moving aside to show his ministers the map. We need to take action to ensure that we are not overwhelmed by our sudden rivals. It's no secret that they enjoy Japan's material support. One minister, Goldsov, spoke up. It will take some work, of course, but I have been thinking the same thing. We cannot allow ourselves to be outcompeted by our rivals. A few proposals can be drawn up, my Vorst. Industrialization under the direct supervision of the government, attracting any potential foreign investment by any means necessary. Matkovsky looked around the room, wanting, waiting for any other comments before continuing. Good, please do. I don't plan on matching Rodzajewski and the Whites. I want to outstrip their production. 
tacit nods from uh, most followed. Matkowski made his intentions clear. He wanted to turn Magadan into a city of industry. Not an easy task, certainly, for Magadan's earliest purpose was, a, was as a stop off for the work camps and mines in the region. But if the Vosht thought uh, it best, it was probably best. And every person in the room, Matkowski included, knew that if the Vosht wanted it, it would be done. Matkowski nodded gently before stating, Well then, let's get to work. We have our work cut out for us. An American visit. A boat has arrived from Kamchatka carrying an interesting passenger, an American tourist. People do not usually come to visit Russia from the outside, especially Americans. After all, no one likes visiting war torn wastelands, especially the spread out and frigid Far East. He probably won't even last a week without freezing to death unless we help him out somehow. We cannot let a naive American die in the wilderness. The least we can do is to prove shelter for a few days. Perhaps Matkowski could even meet with him. Being an American, he could be useful for reaching the leadership of the United States. We have, uh, we have always wanted a close relationship with the Americans. So why not start now when we have one right here? Matkowski even believes he has connection to the CIA. What fortune! Besides, it would be a good way to show hospitality. The American ought to be impressed when he meets the true Vosht of the Russians. No matter what, it would make a good impression. It would make a good impression. Would will help us stand out besides all the other warlords surrounding us. However, maybe it could be a better and safer idea just to give him a general tour around Magadan. Letting uh, him see the town will show him the true way of life in Russia better than any meeting with Matkovsky. Besides, the Vosd is a busy man, and he may not enjoy wasting his time with uh, a potentially worthless American. So, should we give him a tour of the town, or should Matkovsky invite him to drink? Um, I think that we should give him a tour. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Entry 2. Touring Magadan. I was given a tour around Magadan today. It's a fun town with lots of bars. They only serve vodka though, and to be honest, it's pretty terrible. The seaport is probably the only thing around, a uh, big thing around. Still, there is a ve very cozy feeling about the place. A weird sort of cozy, because you can walk past the family enjoying a quaint meal and then look across the street and see a black shirt officer beating up a hobo. Still cozy though. It feels like Magadan is the only place around, even though I'm told that there are, f there are a few more villages nearby. Still, it is certainly isolated, so I hope I can find my way to where I'm going next. The, there aren't many roads in Russia either. While we were touring, I'm pretty certain I also saw a labor camp. Not sure if that uh, was what it was. But from the way my tour guide tried to keep me away from it, I'm pretty sure Magadan has a few populated labor camps. However, those will be the worst thing I see in Russia. From what I expect, however, some places may be far worse. Overall, Magadan isn't all that bad. I do sure hope not all places are like this though. It seems the people have adjusted to the harsh life here. Some in, in, some in different ways than others. But I'm glad I came. It's time to continue my trip and I have a long way to go. Still better than Amur. Okay, so we now have some loot to spend and I think that I should go with basic literacy because it uh, keeps going downhill. So let's build some new schools and about warlord development, the best thing to do I think is to go with industrial investments. Alright, so Siberian factories are now completed, so let's go with Siberian farms. As a famous Chinese strategist once said, an army marches not on its feet, but its stomach. The port town of Magadan has always relied on outside imports during the time of the accursed union and empire to sustain its need for food. Deprived of connections to other regions of the motherland, most of its inhabitants have turned to coastal fishing to make do in the meantime. A secret uh, wish spreads in their hearts, born out of hunger, for uh, Russia to save them. The party 
and Matkovsky with it shall heed their call. The officials will gather volunteers and conscripts to work in the fields of Siberia. The Far East is not fertile, but an effort from an honest Russian will be all it takes to create a miracle. We do not need our storehouses to be filled with food overflowing, just enough to survive the harsh climate of Siberia and feed our people. When Russia rises again, all these will be forgotten, like ashes in the wind. So the agriculture uh, development will begin to improve, that's good. Alright, so the Siberian farms uh, is completed. And that's not of our concern. I will be reading only uh, the events that are directly um, connected to the plot, the main plot of, so, sort of plot to uh, to Magadan. Uh, so go, let's go with try something else. With the founding of the Siberian factories and farms, the party in Magadan has established itself as a force capable of action and reform. Unfortunately, these acts have only had limited success so far. As hard as it is for Matkovsky and his political clique to admit it, time will only tell as to the efficacy of these efforts. For now, we can only wait. In the meantime, there is uh, the matter of the army, armed forces of the party. Though uh, capable and relatively well armed, our men are not suited for or used to fighting in the far north. It's time to try something else. Matkovsky, a soldier himself in an age long past, shall observe as his generals and officers forge from the soldiers a new army of hardened and experienced men capable of fighting in the tumultuous weather of Siberia. Drills will be a regular occurrence, whether in harsh or clear conditions. Every soldier of Magadan shall be the spearhead of, Ma of Matkovsky's crusade. We will... So Konstantin Kuznetsov will get uh, the winter specialist. Uh, so, who are you actually? Kuznetsov, you are the second. No, the, the two, second, uh, two level general. Uh, trickster, inflexible strategist, uh, not. Uh, not so good actually. Um, but you have a good attack skill, so. That's actually pretty nice. Okay, so uh, trying something else focus is completed. So now let's go with... Um, maybe with preliminary arming. The time has come for the Siberian factories we built to bear fruit. With enough workers to staff their floors and sufficient machinery, they can begin to operate as intended. From the streets of Magadan, these factories, chimneys can be seen churning out smoke, a hint of the things they create within. Rifles, uniforms, bullets, even art artillery guns and shells lurk inside of them. The party has triumphed again in the most desperate of situations, and Matkovsky is pleased. It is time to arm the militant wing of the party. With adequate equipment, our soldiers will, will stand to fight the Reds, the Tsarists or Rodzajewski with much greater strength, even if it is a mistake to underestimate them so early. This advantage will afford us the opportunity we need to unify the Far East, as Matkovsky gears up for a crusade to liberate the motherland from the clutches of suffering and disunity. Inspection Day Mikhail Matkovsky, the Vosht himself, made his way down to the Magadan garrison to inspect the quality of the troops that made up his army. The chilly morning air seemed not to have any effect on the Vosht, who was in full military dress. As he, had, as he and his high command approached the troops in formation, all of the soldiers were dressed as he was and sported their weapons of war, but even before he approached them, Matkovsky could tell what poor soldiers they would make. His generals exchanged nervous glances with one another. One soldier was too fat, the other malnourished. The third was too short and the fourth didn't have his uniform un buttons done upright. They all had the full uniform, but it seemed as if they had simply borrowed bits and pieces from their peers, as a lot of them didn't fit. All of them, not just these four, 
were equipped with weapons that looked like they had been outdated by the time the Germans were ravaging the west of Russia. This sorry state of affairs made it blatantly obvious to Matkovsky that on one of the ma most important days of their lives, these troops could barely muster together even the smallest shred of professionalism. The inspection ended, Matkovsky politely walking along the columns of the Magdalene garrison, taking mental notes. Scruffy beards, outdated weapons, ill discipline. Matkovsky knew that it wasn't their fault, for the most part. He had a chronic shortage of bodies, weapons and officers, all of which were necessary for raising and maintaining a professional army. After the inspection, he had called the meaning of his high command, where a rare flare of anger shone through his usual professional behavior. What is going on? These are the best troops that you uh, have to offer me? He asked his generals. A number of cursory excuses were offered, but Matkovsky put his hand up to demand their silence. I don't want to hear it. If those are the men who guard the capital, what do those uh, on the front line look like? How do you think we will overcome Rozaevsky, let alone retake the entirety of Russia? I don't care what the solution is. I want you to find it. And I want to be briefed on it this time tomorrow. Ah, oh, come on, it's not that bad. Well, it is. Rising tensions. It all started with a game of cards in a bar. Alexis joined, just down the street from the port of Magadan. There, a couple of locals, their names blurring on the party report sheet, were playing blackjack. The gamble was over a couple of drinks and several th hundred rubles. Nothing big, but nothing small. They expected the night to go on as smoothly as it always did, a cruise into the moonlight as the games continued, pockets emptying and men filling into the street with the grace of drunken feet. Three listless men entered into the bar, new arrivals in Magadan. They were wearables men, heavily armed and hardly paid. Professional soldiers that hailed from all corners of the world. They had too much free time. At first, they and the locals got along quite nicely, which is to say they did not interact much at all. Only silent nods and scares, eye contact bridged the difference between the group. The uneasy truce did not last long. The listless men flirted with the girls behind the counter, and the locals did not like it. Standing up, they shouted profanities at the mercenaries in a language they did not understand. It did not take long for the soldiers to unholster their pistol and threaten the locals. It only took a minute before one of the mercenaries accidentally fired a shot, resulting in a dead civilian who was only found hours after, later after the rioting that ensued. The locals, instead of being driven back by gunshots, charged this, the armed men, using broken bottles and chairs to attack the new arrivals. Werbel's mercenaries, dispatched as a backup for the new arrivals, got involved shortly. The party's police, that who intervened to stop more bloodshed, were met with a rain of bullets and jagged glass. After a dozen dead civilians and two dozen more wounded, the riots were finally put down by force. The three mercenaries were immediately tried and sentenced. The party's police, for their part, did their job, after two hours. A premonition, perhaps. Well, that did not uh, start well. Alright, so preliminary arming is completed, so now let's go with, uh, well, winterized gear. Among all the ways that uh, the Far East can be inhospitable, the most prominent it is its low temperature. To move in a cold Siberian winter is hard, to fight in it is even harder. Worse, the gear that our soldiers currently use often decays or is otherwise useless in the harsh weather. We must find a solution as the winter conditions are a near constant concern for the troops. Moreover, acquiring more durable equipment for the Siberian winter would give uh, our soldiers another crucial advantage against our enemies. Matkovsky will order all military equipment to be winterized. As most of our equipment will, is not ready to be used in low temperatures, this will be a lengthy and involved process. However, this is a struggle we must endure. The eventual liberation of Russia will take everything we have, and this small uh, inconvenience is nothing compared to that challenge. Someday, when Matkovsky rules Russia, all of this will prove its worth. So winterized gear will give us uh, minus 10% uh, division attrition, minus 50% winter attrition, and call acclimatization 50%. 
cool. Alright, so winter race gear is completed and now let's go with acquire advisors. The lands of Siberia have a long history. From even before the time of the empire's rapid expansion eastwards in past centuries, various peoples have dwelt here, enduring the harsh weather and making a living from it. The troops of Magadan have much to learn from them, and their advice on surviving in the wild could mean the difference between life and death in the unrelenting conditions of the Far East. To acquire these advisors, some troops, along with local interpreters, will travel, no travel north to the lands surrounding Kamchatka. There, will, there we will establish contacts with the natives, in hopes of using their millennia of experience to aid the development of our own theory of warfare. We shall mold our soldiers into survivors, into victors. No longer shall they survive in the Siberian wilds by the skin of their teeth. From now on, they shall live with neither doubt nor, co nor concern given to the gods of the far eastern lands. Alright, so advisors... Uh, are now acquired and go let's go with radical techniques the far east is a wild wild land sparsely inhabited even during the union and empire without the civilization to sustain the russian expansion east life has become challenging and unrelenting in the forests and tundras of siberia where it does not assume the character it has further west with no significant infrastructure to speak of, warfare in the north has uh, been reduced to skirmishes between the little powers that battle for control in the, of the Far East. To come out on top in Siberia would mean abandoning the general percepts, percepts of war as it is thought, taught in Europe. For the sake of our cause, we must leave behind everything we know. After all, the methods of war change to fit the ages. Our soldiers will receive a radical new training regime, based on the lessons we have learned from the Siberian natives. Soon the forests and tundras of Siberia will be like the plains and fields of western Russia to us, with no obstacle to uh, stop us from attacking the enemy, whether it be Rotaevsky, the Tsarists or even the Reds. We will get army professionalism to improve. Alright, so radical techniques are now completed. So we can go with uh, sitting out the winter. If you if you are wondering, nothing actually important is happening uh, throughout uh, this whole time we are doing focuses. That's why I just you know skip through. We have done all that we can. The factories and farms stand. Their produce finding their way to the soldier and citizen alike. Native advisors have trained our men into hardened soldiers capable of surviving the inhospitable Far Eastern climate while maintaining combat effectiveness. The winterization order is complete. The equipment churned out by our manufacturers are now capable of performing in low temperatures. We are ready to act, but winter is coming. There is not much we can do against the forces of nature. We must sit the winter out and station the soldiers to perform maintenance on the telegram poles and roads. Patrols will still happen to ensure that Matkovsky's domain will remain free of crime and banditry, but no combat exercises will take place. All units will operate as usual, adjusting for weather. When it ends, there is an enormous task that awaits us all, and Matkovsky shall stand ready at the helm. Alright, so research is finished, so maybe let's... Uh, do something more of course we'll get we'll go down with transistor computing um, to get some even more research speed and oh and let's go with infantry support weapons um and yeah uh, tell me if you want to uh, stay with um, with this uh, ui or if i should uh, you know, change it to the vanilla one because I'm actually pretty, mm, pretty used to this uh, UI. Uh, but I've heard that people actually complain. I was, I also complained uh, about it. So um, tell me if you'd want to have, if you want to have it changed or if it may stay. And we have an ultimatum from Yakutia. So, um, we have to, well, we won't back down, because that's not how 
we are rolling down here. Um, but we have to at least get one division into position. Or at at this point, two divisions. Mm, but we have eight days left, and I think that we will be able to uh, get down there. Oh, in 14 days, so... Well, we will wait it out. Um, but f but before we do that, we have already f uh, completed sitting out the winter. So now let's go with desperate times. After all that we have done, it has come to this. Our food supplies are running out, our winterized equipment barely works in the winter winds, and our farms and factories are non-functional. The winter might have come and gone, but it has left its mark on our efforts to stabilize the realm and gain traction amid the harsh Siberian conditions. Perhaps it is time to look outward, using Matkowski's plans to reach out to foreign powers and ME... How is it spelled? Let me check. ME Grace to support his cause in Russia. We have three options that we can go through. The Tsar, residing in Chita, is our unwilling enemy at best, but perhaps he, we can convince his clique to uh, accept a ceasefire. The Americans, under their President Nixon, may be inclined to support us, provided we make them promises of reform. Finally, the Russian emigres, the most prominent of whom is the influential fascist Anastasi Wozniacki, might be persuaded to uh, through their might be persuaded to through the resources behind our cause to put through or something like that i don't know regardless of whom we convince to support us one thing is clear the party will not survive alone well it won't uh, so now let's um, let's get our division into into place Oh, it's actually the, the one of those um, free radio broadcasts. It's actually pretty nice. The broadcast started wrong. Before the talk show began, the Magadan free radio played a sequence of songs plagued by crackling audio. The inexperienced crews of the MFR, fascists unused to any other work than thuggery, had mixed the sound with too much bass and mistakenly placed the treble dial. The audio cuts. A thumb. Two thumbs. Is this thing on? A coarse voice said, his lips smacking too close against the microphone. Oh, it is. Another voice, a smooth baritone said from uh, the far corner of the room. We are live, what the hell are you saying? Trembling on the table as the voice closed in. Three taps on the table. Follow the script. An awkward pause. Did you forget to disconnect the microphone? Did you? A sigh. This is such a fucking disaster. An electric discharge sounded as the mic was unplugged. The badly mastered songs continued, ratting, rattling the first broadcast of the MFR. The radio cuts out again. The coarse voice returned, still a little, too, a little too close to the mic. Hello, fellow Russians in the Far East. Welcome to the very first broadcast of Magadan Free Radio, lip smacking. My name is Sergei. I am the host of, this, uh, of the radio tonight, alongside with my friend Vasi. Sergei Moist trailed off. A few moments later, he shouted into the air, likely blowing out a few eardrums. Vasily! Vasily took his seat audibly. With a little sigh, he began. Yes, my friend, with my friend Sergei here, we shall accompany you through many, many cold Siberian nights in the future. An affected cheer. For now, we'd like to thank Mr. Matkowski, the voice of the RF RFP, for sponsoring this program an awkward silence, as the clock ticked in the background. For now, let's proceed with the music. Just before the audio turned on, the smooth baritone said, What the fuck is wrong with you? What a way to make a first impression, with change in popularity of fascism by 5%. And how about the ultimatum, and how about uh, this dude? Of course, we're in the desert, this does not concern us. Uh, maybe let's... Um, Mm, stay here. We still have two days, so that's good, and we will not back down so easily. And let's see how this one 
It works out, the Mongolian civil war does not concern us. Yes, it doesn't. And, uh, well, we are fighting against one uh, cavalry unit. Well, whatever. Alright, so the enemy is defeated, we will get 25 political power, 1% of stability and 175 units of early infantry rifle. Okay, so it's actually pretty nice uh, when it comes to our, uh, our production. Okay, uh, so... Um, yeah, we we're still waiting for desperate times. Alright, so now it is completed, and I think that we will get... Uh, um, uh, an event, but no, we won't. Uh, Alright, so... I think that this... Uh, uh, this is a good time to end the episode. I hope that you've liked it, uh, as much as I... Uh, did while recording it because I've pretty much had fun and uh, remember to consider uh, the Patreon stuff and of course leave a like, subscribe and maybe leave a comment uh, down below and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!